Today is Thursday, September 23rd for our Zillow Flex weekly training. Um, we're going to try to knock this out in half an hour so we can get everybody on their way. Um, we're going to go over our pipeline and just go over some notes for the week. Um, just a quick check in just to see how everyone's doing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So we met with our we meet with our growth advisor every Wednesday. Um, these are going to be our notes from yesterday's meeting. Um, let me pull these up quick. So just a couple things here. Actually, before I go into the notes, let me put pull up our performance so far. Um, okay, so um, projected connections over the next 30 days is 138. Um, I think we've gotten 115 already. We're almost coming up to the end of our first campaign. So each campaign is three months. So we started, uh, I think July 28th is when we launched. So July, August, September, October. So October, end of October will be our third month. Um, so we are two months in basically. Um, so the couple key things here is going to be our appointment rate. So we're at an 84% overall appointment rate, which is really good. The benchmark is around 70%. And we're just going to highlight a couple people who are booking appointments really well. So we got Luis at 100%, AJ at 100%, Diana 100%, Zihao 95%. 90 for Itzel, 89 for Maori, Anna, 87, Tony, 87, Zahara, 86, Hervin, 79, Emmanuel, 76, Mitch, 75, Tyler with 71. So we want to be at a 70 or higher. That's kind of the benchmark. So there's a couple of people that are under that, um, Brian and Blanca, although Blanca hasn't gotten that many connections and neither has Robert. So um, we got to figure out maybe for Brian, since he's gotten 13 connections, um, if there's any help that he needs. Well, I have an appointment on, I have an appointment on Saturday to meet with another one. Um, so that should put me above 70%. Okay. So the, this number is going to be based off you changing it to appointment set in the Zillow Flex app. So oh, have, I just changed one. Oh, you just changed it right now? Yeah. Okay. So just, yeah, the key thing is just making sure you, you guys are getting credit for your work. So whenever you book an appointment, making sure you're changing the status to appointment because um, these metrics are going to, are what we're looking at. And then obviously everyone's combined is what's going to give us our team, team metrics. So overall, everyone's performing well, um, 84%. It's a strong appointment rate. And we know that appointments lead to people that we meet with and people that we meet with and show homes to eventually leads to contracts, submitting offers and contracts. So just following that funnel, guys. Hey, can you refresh it just to see where I'm at? Um, sure. I don't know if it's instant. Yeah, I don't think it will. Yeah, it may not be instant. Well, let's see. Yeah, see, it still shows 62. Okay. Appointments, so a nine uh, divided by 13. Yeah, mine's 70% with that. Okay. So, yeah, just continue, guys, to follow the script. You know, I think the big thing for appointments is, is making sure that we're showing value on that initial call, making sure that we're not putting, a, you know, hurdles or roadblocks in front of them meeting with you. So if they want to see a house, you know, just book the appointment to see the house. You can always call and check on that property after if you have to reschedule the appointment or let's say that property is not available, have a couple more properties that they can look at. So, you, you know, just do everything you can to keep that appointment um, so that you can get face to face. The way we're going to win these people over is by getting face to face with them. So um, that's the most important thing. So just make it easy for them to meet with you. Um, and then obviously, once you meet with them and stuff, they'll be able to see your true value and you'll be able to establish more of a connection. Um, one of the things from the last call was um, 
making sure that we're going a little deeper with our conversations, you know, like asking, you know, follow-up questions and just putting a few more layers in that conversation so that there's more stuff you could talk about. Um, not necessarily in interrogating them, but, you know, just digging a little deeper on getting to know them and building rapport. Has anybody... Um, I, I think, Enrique, really back. quick, Enrique, a good takeaway that we got was building off of the ALM, right? Just building off of that, right? Expanding on that. When you have that, that conversation with the client, I know we've been practicing just straight booked appointment, which is totally fine. Now I think we're at that next level of building off of those, those, those pillars. And the main thing, the main takeaway that I, that I got from, from the Zillow rep was just don't create any roadblocks, right? And just build on that ALM. And that'll help kind of get the clients to definitely uh, continue to meet with us versus not showing up. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So the ALM, that's the appointment location motivation, right? So you know, if this property is in San Jose, you know, and they want to go see it, it's ask up, ask a follow-up question like, oh, hey, that's a great neighborhood. You know, do you guys live there? Have you guys lived there before? Do you know people? What do you know about the neighborhood or, or why is that neighborhood important to you in particular? Right. What you want to show is like that you care, right? You want to get to know the clients a little bit more because the more that you can get to know them on that conversation, the more there's going to be a connection um, so that they're more likely to want to show up and meet you. If it's just strictly like, okay, I'll see you there at three. Goodbye. I'll call you back to confirm. There's not a lot of meat on that conversation. There's not a lot of rapport building, right? If you're not sharing a laugh with them, or if you're not letting the client feel like you care about, you know, their goals, then it's going to be that much easier for them to cancel on you. Right. So, um, like Jason said, the ALM is that's the basic script and everyone's pretty much got the basic part down. The next level is to now take that ALM and, and make it a higher quality conversation, building off those points in the ALM. So, so just continue to do that. And uh, really quick guys, you guys got to continue to role play this on your own, especially my newer agents that are on the Zillow flex. You guys got to take, now that we have, now that you guys had to have a, a few conversations, now, now take that to the next level and start role playing those scenarios with some of these these higher these, these senior agents or junior agents or team specialists, right? Just start role playing it. Let's do um let's do a quick role play on that right now. Actually, I'm gonna pick on um who wants to be a volunteer first. Volunteer? No. All right, Alfredo, I'm picking on you. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so how would you build off of, you know, the property that I that I inquired on is in, um, it's in Milpitas. Uh-huh. Off of, uh, what is it, Hostetter and whatever the cross street is. But how would you now build off of that to build more rapport with me? So let's just role play. I, want you, to, I want you to tell me like, hey, I see you inquired on this property on 123 Main Street. You know, and okay. then- Ask some follow-up questions on how you would build more rapport. Got it. Hey, Enrique, I see that you inquired uh, about this property over on uh, 123 Main Street. So I yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go check that one out, um, that one there in Milpitas. Okay, perfect. Uh, I see here that it has a uh, pool and a big backyard. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah. My, my family and I, want we want a pool. Okay. Is that all you're looking for in this home, Enrique? I mean, how many bedrooms do you need? Probably at least four, at least four bedrooms. I have a couple, um, two small kids. At least four bedrooms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I actually have a, a, you know, few other homes similar to this in mind within that same area. Uh, you mentioned you have some small kids. I have a daughter of, uh, you know, she's three years old, so she keeps me busy, but, um, are you looking for, uh, you know, good elementary schools? I'm assuming. Okay. Let's stop there. Yeah. So, I want you to ask me more about my kids. Like, oh, you have two kids. Awesome. You know, what ages, right? Like Got it. taking that to the next step. Like instead of you telling me about you, you need to ask about me, right? Got it. Yep. Like so that you're getting to know me more, right? So let's try that okay. again. Yeah, I want to pull because I have, you know, I got two small kids. Oh, you got two small kids. That's awesome. Enrique, how old are they? Uh, my, my daughter's eight and my son's five. So they love, they love swimming. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Sounds just like, uh, like my kids there. So, uh, anything else that you need for them? I mean, other than, other than, you know, just the big backyard in the pool, I know you mentioned you want to stop, stop, for- stop, stop, stop. How can you build a little bit deeper on that? Peel that onion back a little bit. Do I have a pool right now? Do I live in an okay. apartment? Like what right? type of activities they do maybe like, or what type of sports are they in maybe, pool. or anything like that? Maybe no talk, stay on the pool. Talk about the pool. How can you keep engaging about the pool? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to try that again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we definitely want to pull. I have two small kids, you know, they love swimming. They love swimming. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see that this pool here has like, you know, a huge built-in slide and like a little man cave in there as well. So, um, you know, it sounds like your kids would enjoy that, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, they definitely love swimming. They're eight and five and yeah, they, they love being in the water. Okay. Awesome. Well, you know, this seems like, you know, the right type of backyard to keep them entertained, especially with the huge uh, grass area right next to that pool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'm gonna try someone else. AJ. <laughs> Shit. AJ. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this property. Yeah. I mean, I, it has a pool and we're looking for a pool. Hey, Enrique, you, you, do you like swimming yourself? You know what? Honestly, I'm not too big on swimming, but I have two kids. Um, eight, they're, um, I have a, a daughter and a son, eight and five, and they love the water, man. Uh, it's nice that they love the water. Have you thought about enrolling them to any swimming classes? You know what? That's, that's funny you say that. We just put them in the YMCA at, for swimming lessons. So this is their first summer doing swimming lessons, and it's actually going to be over pretty soon. But So they, they love that. Got it. Got them. That, that's awesome. I also, uh, you know, if you're interested, maybe when that one's over, uh, my sister-in-law was actually a swimming coach. Um, you may be interested. Maybe it's something that you guys can connect on. I know that your kid loves swimming. She's my sister-in-law. I know she'd take care of them um, and see what we can do. I mean, overall, it sounds like you're a person that likes maybe some backyard space. Like, do you like barbecuing, entertaining with your kids and having friends over? Yeah, actually, man, I, I'm, I love the, I love barbecue and I really, I cook really good on the grill. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I make a mean tri-tip. That's like my specialty. Hey uh, man, I, I completely respect that. Let's just say that when we sell this property, I'm a person that I hopefully get an invite. I'll bring my kids over. We can have a barbecue at your spot. I'll bring some tri-tip and let's see what you can do. Hey, now you're talking. Now you're talking. All right. Yeah. Yeah. A little, we got a little cook off in the backyard. Yeah. We'll have, we'll, we'll have a little cook off together. So yeah, I mean, to kind of, you know, at, at least raise the bar a little bit, let's go check out a time to see this property. Let's see if something that it works for you. All right, stop right there. All right, there you go. You see how he like, he dug a little bit deeper. He took the conversation a little further. He built off what I said. His sister's a swimming coach. He asked, do I like the backyard? Do I like to entertain? He talked about the tri-tip. He wants to come over and eat my food for free. You know, those, that's taking it to the next level. You know, Alfredo did a little bit of that, right? AJ took it to a, the next step, right? So those are all things where we got to let our personality out because that's going to make the difference, right? Now, AJ is someone that I'm picturing hanging out in the backyard with barbecuing, right? Instead of just the guy who answered the Zillow call, who's going to open the door for me, right? That's the big difference. And when I, when I go to cancel on AJ, or if I think about canceling, I'm going to feel bad because he just offered a swimming coach and he potentially is my new best friend that's going to come over and hang out. So I'm probably not going to want to cancel him. I'm going to want to at least meet this guy because he sounds pretty cool on the phone. All right. So we're doing a great job of booking the appointments and just going through that script because it's, think about it. It's super easy to book the appointment. Yes or no? Give me a thumbs up if you think it's easy to book the appointment. Like if I'm a consumer and I click on 123 Main Street because I want to see that property and you're the person that answers and you're going to show that to me, like it's easy to book that appointment. That's the easy part, all right? But what we're trying to do, that's the opportunity that's being presented to you. How do you take that opportunity and turn that into a relationship, right? A relationship is what's going to go the long term. That's when someone's going to, you're going to gain a client, right? Not just a door opener. So if you only act like a door opener, then I can open a door and close a door real easy, right? I can cancel that appointment real easy. So you want to take it to the next step of becoming a friend, an advisor, a consultant, and all that stuff. And it's just a matter of asking questions and just getting to know the person. And again, guys, another takeaway is definitely building that rapport. But the other thing is gauging the conversation of, of where is your client at? You know, are they are they in the middle of a soccer game or are they are they 
you know, I know sometimes they may be a little rushed, so you may not be able to build that rapport on the first call. So just also understand that, understand where, you know, where that conversation is, is being, being handled at, right? And being able to adjust because you don't want to spend too much time with someone if, if they are in a rush and they just want to get that appointment set. So just making sure that you can kind of balance that out is, is really important. Yeah. If you, hear, if you hear kids screaming in the background or a kid crying or something, they may just want to hurry up and get to the point. So you got to, like Jason said, gauge the client. But remember, the appointment, 99% of the time is going to be booked because they click on this property. So that's the, that's the easy part. That's going to happen already. It's how do you now engage them a little bit more so that they remember you and they want to meet with you. Was this helpful, guys? Give me a thumbs up if this is helpful. And do you have any questions? Brian. Yeah, so going off of that, um, like you said, they might not have enough time to um, like talk, but don't they have to like put their information and in everything so the call could go to you guys or? Yeah, so does it work? yeah, we already have their info, right? So um, huh? the info, the inquiry already came in online. It's already being assigned. If you're on the phone with them, that lead is going to be assigned to you through Zillow. So you'll have all their information already. So, so how long, um, like, do you know, like how long ago they inquired about that property or is it right away that Zillow flex gives you a call? It's immediate. Yeah. So it just, it just happens. So if they clicked it right now, Zillow Zillow's going to get them on the phone. It's going to route to you and you're going to answer the phone. So it all happens immediate. And I can, okay. uh, I'll, on a, we'll, on a side note, we'll, we'll get with you and kind of show you a little bit more how it works on the back end. Um, Got it. But right now, the key thing is just making sure you guys understand we got to make the conversations a little more quality so that we can increase our met with rate. Um, because that's the part where we're having a bit of a drop off. I'm going to share my screen again. And I'm going to show you guys uh, Zillow Flex notes. So if we look here. It starts with answer rate, right? 58%, 67. So this is how many times are you answering the phone, right? So when your phone's being pinged or ringing or whatever, are you answering the calls, right? The more you answer the phone, the more likely you're gonna talk to someone, right? Now, when you do talk to someone, how many appointments are you booking? As you can see, we have mostly everyone's in the green. We got a couple reds because maybe uh and they haven't gotten that many connections and i know that's why and we got a, a yellow here emmanuel um so these greens right these appointment rate they need to now translate to the met rate so the met rate right here is where we're having some trouble here as you can see it's kind of all over the board right we have greens we have yellows we have some reds at the bare minimum we want to be at least at a 40 percent met rate or higher a 40% or higher is like the bare minimum, right? We want to get you guys to be even higher than that. Um, but 40% is kind of the bare minimum. That's why you'll see some people in yellow if they're like close to that 40. All right, so this is the part where you guys can increase. Like I'm going to pick on Anna real quick. Anna, you have a 90% appointment rate, but you got a 41% met rate, right? So... There's a huge opportunity right here for Anna to probably, you know, improve the quality of her conversations to get more people to show up and meet her. Um, the other thing too, guys, just, just overall is making sure that you're changing the status to met with, because if you don't change the status to met with, then this number is going to be off. So there's also, that's also in your guys' control if you're not updating your statuses. But I see a huge opportunity. If Anna's doing a great job of booking the appointments. Now, how can we get more people to meet with us that we book? Um, Diana, you had, a, I know you don't have, you haven't had that many connections, but you booked an appointment and then we don't have a met with, they might've canceled or rescheduled. So as you get more opportunities and more shots on goal, then you'll have an opportunity to increase that. Um, let's see right here. We got Maori. This is a huge one. Maori has an 89% appointment rate, but he has a 22% met rate. There's a huge gap right there where he's doing a great job of booking appointments, but he's not getting people to meet with him. 
right? I'm just wondering, what happens if someone lies about meeting someone? We'll like, are, are there are there checks and balances for if somebody's lying about meeting that many people? Or yeah, there are because if you if you say you're meeting with a hundred percent and you met with twenty people, but you're not submitting any offers, right? It's gonna at the end of the day, it's gonna show, right? So the thing is, be truthful as possible so that we can actually have the da the data and we can know where to coach you at. So can you lie? Yeah, you can say mm -hmm. you met with everybody, but it's not going to benefit you in the long run. Cause if you're meeting with everybody and you're not putting up any offers at the end of the day, you're not converting. And, but what it happens if you have a low met rate, like I have a 41%, but I have accepted offer. Does like that benefit me in any way that I haven't accepted offer from the little book? Of course. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is conversion, right? The bottom line for flex is, is conversion. How many are you getting in contract? But and that's not what we're looking at right now. What we're looking at is the met rate, because we know the more people you meet with, the more offers you're going to end up submitting or showing homes to, which ultimately will lead to more conversion. Mm -hmm. So the part that we want to coach everyone on is, is the met rate. To get them to the offer rate. Exactly. Right. Because if you meet with, if you got, let's, let's pick on Brian real quick, or let's use Brian as an example, Brian, where are you at? You had 12 connections, I believe. Uh, 13, I think. 12 or, well, right, this, whenever they pulled this data, it was 12. So let's just use that 12 number. So you had 12 and you had a 67%. I'm just gonna go off the numbers that we have here, just for an example. Yeah, do your thing, bro. So 12 times 67%, that means you met with, uh, you booked eight of them as appointments, right? Out of those eight, uh, you met with 42%. So 42% of the 12. So times like points, four. You met with five people, right? So just imagine if you met with all eight and you met with five and you got a deal in contract, right? So just imagine if you met with seven of them, that might, that would have been two other opportunities to convert. You might have gotten maybe one more deal in contract. So the met rate right? It's a funnel, right? It all follows, right? The more appointments you set, the more you meet with, the more homes you're showing. If you're showing people homes actively, eventually they're going to write an offer, right? So the thing for us, and this is what our, our advisor is saying, is we need to coach everyone on this met rate. Why aren't we meeting with more or what can we do to meet with more of the appointments we're booking? Because we have a great um, appointment rate, but our met rate is, on, is, is low. I agree with something that you said earlier too, is that now that Zillow is letting us get away from just like that hard curriculum script and like letting us feel a bit more ourselves and like coordinate with people and, and actually communicate with them and connect with them. Yeah. I think your appointment rate is going to go up significantly. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and you can see our metrics. So this is our metrics right here on this column on the left. Um, appointment set. So we've had 245 connections. They pulled this um, the other day. So 245 connections that our team has received in the first two months or so. 84% um, appointment rate. But if you look at that, we have a 47% met with rate. And 45 or so is like the benchmark, right? That's the low, that's the low end. Um, when you scroll up, if you look here, I think last week we were at 43. The top 10% partners are, are have at a 52, right? So we have some room to improve on our met with rate. If everyone just meets with one or two more of their appointments, then that means offers will be going up as well. The big drop off too, guys, is when we're meeting with people, and submitting offers. We're at about a 6%, but the top performers are close to a 12% of submitting offers. And part of that is it does take time, right? Like you're building a pipeline. So you're going to meet with people. You're, you're going to eventually show homes. It does, there is, does take a few months to start getting people to submit offers. But once we're like rocking and rolling, we have a hefty pipeline that we've been nurturing. That number should go up. Okay. So 
I think the, the big takeaway is quality conversations, getting more people to meet with us. If we just focus on that, then everything else will follow. Now, part of some of the notes here, um, if you've been showing homes to buyers for at least two plus weeks, then we should be submitting offers, right? This is what we're looking at. Um, if you're showing homes to buyers for more than three or four weeks and they haven't submitted an offer and you're actively showing homes, then we got to figure out like, is this the best use of your time? Is your client motivated? Is your buyer serious? Do we maybe need to put time and energy into a different buyer who is more serious? Right? Because if you've shown someone already, I don't know, and you guys can, can give me some feedback on this. If you've shown someone 10 homes, should they, and you've already narrowed down their criteria, you went and took them out to 10 homes that are within their criteria, should they be, some, be submitting an offer by then? Is, yeah. that real, is that realistic or is it unrealistic? What would you guys say, AJ or Zahara or those of you guys that are? I think it depends because like the, I have two clients on Flex right now. They're not from the area. <clears throat> so they're looking to purchase like high price point homes, but they're not familiar with the area, you know? So they're kind of like gauging what they want versus, you know, so in that case, like they're trying to learn the area. So it takes some more time to like do other homes in different areas. So I guess in that case, 10 is a little bit, it should be, I mean, ideally 10 is a lot, you know, they should be at least submitting one. But in this case, I mean, I'd give this guy a pass because he just doesn't know what areas he, he really, really wants. Okay. Um, but I think 10 is a reasonable number. That's a lot of homes. So I would say that's the exception, right? That's probably going to be an exception. You have a particular situation where they're out of the area. They're kind of still trying to figure out where they want to live. But let's take a regular buyer, like who lives out here. They're going to buy a home. They know the areas already. If you go out and show them homes, you know, two different times, I'm assuming you're showing at least four or five homes minimum per showing, right? Some of you guys may be showing more than that, but let's say you guys go look at homes twice and you guys see 10 homes and that in that two showing period, should we now be on the offer table, right? Like let's submit an offer on something. I think so. Yeah, right. definitely, definitely. I showed a client three, three homes and we're, I have an offer out right now for one of them. And out of the four connections I got, that's like the one that's been the, the you know, the hottest, um, but yeah, three, three houses. There you go. So. Now, if you show them 30 homes already and they haven't submitted an offer, something's up there, right? Like you either need to tighten up your criteria or you need to really gauge, like, is this client serious? Because showing 30 homes, that's taking up your time when you can be investing that time into another client who is ready to make an offer, right? So that's the part where if, if it's already been more than two weeks of you showing homes with them and they're not wanting to make an offer yet, then you probably need to have like some of those tough conversations with your clients of like, Hey guys, let's regroup. Let's figure out, you know, what's our criteria. The last thing, cause then they're going to get burnt out, right? You don't want them to get burnt out. You want them to see a ton of homes. You don't want them to go to other open houses and get swooped up by another agent. Like you want to make sure you're, you're helping your client zero in on like, which are the properties we're going to make an offer on. Right. Um, don't just be a door opener right? Be a leader, make sure you're pulling them towards the finish line and you're guiding them and you're putting the checks and balances in. If they want to go see this home and it has none of their criteria and they just want to go see it, like you be the filter now, right? If you've already showed them a handful of homes and you know, they're not going to like this home or, you know, the school suck, or, you know, it's a bad neighborhood and that's not what they're looking for. Then don't take them to see that property, right? Be the person that goes, Hey guys, I know you want to see this home. But you know what? That one's actually on the other side of the train tracks and that neighborhood is not that good. I know that area pretty well. Um, I don't think you guys are gonna like it based off our conversations, All right? And the client's gonna appreciate you, appreciate you that much because they're gonna be like, all right, you're looking out for my interest. You're listening to what I want and they're gonna take your advice as the leader, right? You wanna be that leader for them. So the takeaways guys is make sure you're having those conversations. Don't be afraid to, 
interject and put your advice in for the, for the benefit of the client um, so that ultimately we don't have to show them as many homes and we can you know, create more quality and get them into, uh, into submitting offer phase a lot quicker. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Before yeah, I think the, the, the juniors, I think the juniors should set the example of like, hey, what I tend to do with most clients is what well, the first day I show them five to six homes to kind of get an idea of what they like. After that, we basically, um, whether you like something that day and we make an offer, or if you don't, at least I have a better understanding of what you actually like. So moving forward, we can narrow it down and only view one or two homes actually when we go view properties next time. That we, ha we have a better understanding of what you want and can move aggressively towards those one or two homes instead of viewing 30 or 40 homes. So like setting that standard from the get-go might help us. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a good idea to have that conversation. I would even encourage you guys to have that conversation before you go out and show the first homes. Um, like if it's San Jose, guys, I know San Jose like the back of my hand. So, or whatever area you're showing them in. I can tell them, right? Like if they tell me what they want, I can tell them right off the bat if they're going to like that area or not, right? So that's where your expertise, your local expertise is going to come in for that area. And if you're not an expert yet, then you got to do your homework and start getting out there and, and, and understanding the neighborhoods. But yes, that conversation should be had so that you can um, tailor the search to their exact needs. And here's what you got to do too. If someone's like, well, we still want to go see a bunch of homes. A way to get over that is guys, like the prices are going up. So if we spend four weeks looking at homes that you're not going to like, by the time we find the one you like, it's now $50,000 more expensive because homes are going up in value, right? So say the way I like to work is I'd rather really figure out what you like and let's go out and look at the homes that are in your exact criteria because time is money in our market right now, because home prices are going up every week, All right? So, and it, they are, right? Are prices going up on a monthly basis, yeah. right? For the most part, um, depending on the, on the neighborhood, any of the hot areas, they're definitely going up. Um, okay, let's move on real quick. A couple more things. Um, so on October 4th, guys, is when Zillow is gonna pull our metrics again, that's kind of the do or die October 4th to determine if they're going to give us more leads going forward, if they're going to keep us the same, or if they're going to decrease us. So October 4th, right, is when we need to like have, we need to make a push, right? It's basically for the end of this month um, to try to get a few more in contract. I know some of you guys have offers out and I know you guys have some hot ones you're working with. So if we can get a few more in contract by then, we're gonna be above the expectation for the market for our area, which means they're gonna to wanna to increase our lead flow and provide more opportunity, right? So this kind of next, this next week and a half or so is really gonna be kind of the make or break for what our next three months are gonna look like, our next campaign. Um, any questions on that? Enrique, from, from, from that lead flow, um, whatever it is at any given point, you and Jay kind of look at, at, at how that then is distributed to us as individual agents, right? Exactly. So what we're looking okay, at cool. is, is, is we're looking at who's following. It's not necessarily who's the best agent because some of our agents are busy too, right? Like even if you're a really good agent, but you're just busy, you have other files you're already working on. So we're looking at a combination of things. We're looking at who's following the protocol, who's updating the notes, who's updating the system, who's booking appointments, who's met with rate is higher, right? Um, like my boy, Tyler, he's a newer agent, but he's rocking and rolling, right? So he's got, he's making him happen. So am I going to want to give Tyler more leads? Hell look yeah. That, look at that Tyler smile right there. Right? Look at that smile. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Am I going to want to give Tyler more leads all day? Right. I mean, there's a threshold that every agent has, right. There's a certain point where if you get too many leads and it's hard to keep up with all of them. So it's finding that threshold of where you have enough opportunity that you can manage and you're not freaking drowning or overwhelmed. Like, Oh, I got, I got too many. Right. The great thing is that we have, we have a good sized team. So 
the, the whole point here, guys, is that for all of you guys on the team, doesn't matter if you're new or experienced, if you are doing what you're supposed to do and you're stepping up to the plate, I am going to give you more leads and more opportunity. All right. Who is going to be able to perform and who's going to be able to handle the leads? That's just what it, that's what it means at the end of the day. So I'm looking at how many, how many leads did you get? How many appointments did you get? Did you get, how many did you meet with? Right. Are you converting? Are you putting, are you out showing, you know, showing uh, homes and, and uh, submitting offers? Right. But if you got, you know, 30 appointments in the last 30 days and you only met with 10 of them and you're not submitting any offers, there's a, there's something, there's a disconnect there, right? we got to figure out what it is. You know, maybe you're not pushing hard enough. Maybe the quality of conversations aren't there. Maybe you got, maybe you just got bad luck and you got some bad leads because they were from the BMR property or whatever. There's a bunch of factors, right? Um, but we, we're, we're going to look at all that stuff, right? Because it's not just the one, like you fit in a box. That's not how it is. You got to kind of look at the details. Um, but overall, it's, it's based off performance. And when we meet with our growth advisor, this is exactly what he's doing with us. Like he's going through all of them. He's like looking at you guys individually, like, hey, this guy right here, he's booking appointments, but he's not meeting with people. You need to talk to him about why he's not meeting more people, right? Or this guy's meeting with a bunch, but he hasn't submitted any offers. Why is he not submitting offers if he's already showed homes to 10 different leads, right? Like, those are the things there. So everyone has a different reason why they're either doing great or they're not doing great. Um, so that's the challenge there. Uh, okay, a couple more things, guys, we're almost done. Um, let's see. So yeah, promote leadership from within to help manage other agents' pipeline. So um, of course we have our leadership group and we're gonna continue to you know, promote as people rise up. But think about it, we have 245 connections so far um, since we've started. In a few months, that number is going to double. We're going to have 500 leads that, we're, that we've been working on from Zillow Flex. So it's gonna, it, after a while, it becomes a lot to manage, right? It's a big pipeline of, of leads and people you're following up with. Uh, so this is why, you know, as we, um, as we grow our leaders are going to be stepping up, helping manage the other people's pipelines as well. Like just checking in on a one-on-one -on -one level um, with you guys as well. Um, for our next campaign. So this is another thing that was important is initially when we had everyone give us their zip codes, everyone kind of gave us their ideal zip codes and they were all over the place. It was like 25 zip codes times you know, 20 agents. And a lot of them were all over the place. Some of them were overlapped. But what we want to do going forward for our next campaign is kind of figure out which zip codes have been hitting the most, which ones have the best price points, and be a little more strategic on narrowing down uh, the zip codes that we're working on so that we have a couple agents covering those zip codes and not like one agent covering one zip code and then another zip code, there's seven agents covering one zip code because what happens is then the lead disbursement, it, it's all out of whack. Like if, if Zillow is giving us 20 leads in you know, a Fremont zip code and AJ is the only person on that one, then he's gonna get all the leads for that zip code. Um, and AJ may be fine with that, but we also know that there's a certain threshold too, where if you get too many leads, you're not working them all the way. Right. So there's kind of a sweet spot that we've, you know, been being coached on like 10 to 12 connections a month is a manageable pipeline. Um, anything more than 12 or maybe 15 at the max, anything more than that, you know, because you guys are also getting leads from other sources, it, it starts to become like, you can't keep up with them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally um, kind of feel that because uh, I have 40 connections in two months. Um, don't get me wrong. I love the connections. I love being able to meet, set appointments, do all that. But being able like, that takes a good portion of my day. It's like I go on my Zillow Flex app, 
right? I look on FirePoint, I check the FirePoint, I update the notes, I update Zillow Flex, but that's 40 clients in two months. I was like, maybe 10, 12, I got another one. <laughs> All right. So I lost, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I, I think it does get, just to kind of everybody knows, it does get overwhelming, especially when you have like, I mean, what I have, I have like 40 connections. Um, so, so it's something to kind of, you know, put in your guys' brain. It is a little bit overwhelming at times. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's going to be overwhelming. So, and that's the thing is we don't want you drowning. We want you, we want you pushing, but pushing at a pace that's sustainable long-term, right? So there's that fine line of, of not too many, just enough, you know, so you can convert. So we're going to be adjusting that. So like some of our newer agents who maybe don't have as much experience might be only getting five connections a month to start with until they can prove themselves, right? Like, hey, if you're handling five and you're, you're booking and you're, you're making it happen, then we'll push it up a little bit more. And then some of our stronger agents who already have a track record, they might be getting like the 10 to 15 a month because they can handle more lead volume. Um, and we'll start adjusting those numbers. And then plus, plus there's other leads you guys are getting too, right? So it's not just Zillow Flex. There's, there's other stuff that's coming in. Um, okay, none of this stuff really matters to you guys. Uh, so far in the month of September, so I do just want to give you know some recognition to you guys. We got six, we actually got seven deals in contract from Flex in September. One of them fell through. Um, so we're at a net of six in contract for the month of September from Zillow Flex. So let's give it up, guys. Round of applause. That's awesome. Those are awesome Thanks. numbers for us. I'm going to be the first one to close. Yep, we got to get I'm ready closing. to close. Closing next week. Next week. So um, that's where it starts from, guys. You can only improve from here. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep continuing to trickle in as we get more leads and as we convert these, right? The ones that we talked to a month ago, they'll start to convert, right? So it's a pipeline that we're managing. So um, don't let up guys. Don't, don't sleep on Zillow flex. Like there's huge opportunity in Zillow flex. I think Emmanuel said he got a sell to buy one, right? So there are going to be some occasional sellers in there as well, right? People that need to sell to buy something. Um, any questions guys on this? Okay. Um, we're going to spend a couple minutes just running through the pipeline real quick of and then we will end this. So just bear with me. So I'm just gonna call on you. Uh, I got AJ. And basically what I wanna know is like, who are the hot ones? You know, who's the hot ones? Like who's the ones that are hot? Basically that's what I wanna know. So eight or I know if you just say, just say nurture, showing home still, or like hot, hot, just give me the one word, one word answer. Aaron uh, Aquino. Nurture. Okay, Satish. Uh, nurture. Ramya Shri. Hot. Hot, hot. Okay, so that's a hot one. So I'm just going to paint this guy red if he's hot. Uh, Kayla. That one's a nurture. Okay. Ruchir. Hot. Hot. Um, I don't know how to say this. And it's, 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 it's Sudarshan. Hot. Hot. All right. So those are the only ones that I had from you that were either in showing home phase or submitting offers. Yeah. You got three hot ones right now. Okay. Anna, let's move on to you. Ime? Um, more of a nurture. Okay. Fame, fami. Fame. Um, fame is hot. Hot. We just had to reschedule. Yeah. Okay, Allison. Uh, we're waiting on an offer acceptance. Hopefully, so hot. So hot. Let's go, Geneva. Hot as well. We're gonna get back out there and go to view some more homes. So yeah. Okay. Um, Brian Cantero. We got Janet and Herbert. Brian's still here? 
Oh, I, I muted myself after you unmuted me. Um, Janet's going to be a, a nurturer, and then Ben is hot. He's looking at homes. We showed him homes twice in the past two weeks, but he's waiting for something specific. Okay. Um, okay, cool stuff. Uh, Emmanuel, you still there? Uh, we'll come back. Hervin, I got Mitzi. Yeah, Mitzi's still working on uh, getting pre-approved for a mobile home. Uh, I sent her uh, arts <clears throat> contact information. So they're still working on that. Um, Sat Satya, um, he's kind of taking like a small break right now. He's still interested in doing homes, but there's like this religious thing going on with them right now. So he has to kind of hold off. Same thing for Sagar. Um, Sagar um, reviewed home, both Satya and Sagar reviewed homes. Um, so they're both ready to go. It's just that they kind of need to kind of like identify a property. So yeah. And then what Joseph. The, Adi Yinka. What about Adi Yinka? Oh yeah, he's gonna, he's, he's, I'm gonna put him as a, as a nurture. He's just not, he's just not, he's not open to San Jose. And that's basically the only place he can get like a single family home with a big backyard that he wants, but he's just not open to it for now. Joseph. Uh, and Joseph, we were about to uh, make an offer, but his, uh, he needed more time to get his uh, get his funds at the bank. Okay, so that one sounds like it's hot. Like he's ready to make offers. Yeah, we might actually submit when actually later today if he's if he got the money in the bank finally. Okay, all right, good stuff. Uh, do we have Itzel on the line? Yes. Um, it's all Yumi Kawi, yo, 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 whatever. <laughs> Her name's Amelia. Okay. Um, she is good. She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> hot, all right, hot. Just give me hot, nurture, or still working on it. That's all yeah. I want to know. Nova is also hot, and uh, Danish is also hot. So all three of them. Hey, let's go. All right, good job, Luis. Got Leah. Uh, Leah offer out pretty much verbal acceptance. Hey. Alfia, Alfia is going to be a nurture. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Maudi's not on here. Um, Tony, I don't know if he's still there. It looked like he was going to the point. Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Just give me um, still working Kate's on it, hot. hot or nurture. Kate's hot. Okay. Is that uh, kind of nurture? Okay. Uh, she can uh, also nurture. Okay. Ronar is warm. d is hot. It's a bit offer. Let's go. All right. Good job, Tony. Uh, Tyler, Sudhir, <laughs> and Jessica. Sudhir so is a uh, nurture, uh, and then Jessica is hot. There we go, there we go. Okay, Zahara, Nabil. Client got in car accident, no, has no car. Okay, I'm gonna assume that one. She put not. it in the, in the chat. She said he's still hot and active. Hot and active, all right. Um, Zihao, we got Mohammed and Nitin. Both nurtured. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys. So um, overall, I mean, take a look at this. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think eight, this supposed nine, to be two rocks in here, right? Oh, thank you. 13, 14, 15, 16. What was that? I was going to add uh, for Munish, he's hot. Okay. Ahmed and the other one's nurture. Thank you. Okay. So right. that's uh, 17, guys. We got 17. 17 hot ones right now. People that are super active, submitting offers. Uh, so good stuff, guys. Awesome stuff. Um, continue to push these guys. Continue to get them to move forward. Have those tough conversations with them. Overall, be the leader, right? Help these guys make a decision. You know, a lot of times when the client's just overthinking stuff or they got too many things they got to think about, let them know that, you know, two brains are better than one or three brains are better than two, right? Let's all get together. Let's brainstorm. Let's figure out, you know, if it makes sense for you to move on this property or what should we do um, so that you can lead them to the next step, whether it's back to searching or placing an offer or whatever that might be. Um, you guys are the, you guys are the advisors, right? The consultants. So you just got to take that role. Um, another thing um, real quick, last thing is we did make some adjustments on 
some of the zip codes. I added a few more zip codes for some of you guys that haven't been getting as many connections because we just found out um, Zillow gave us a breakdown yesterday of which zip codes and how many connections they're supposed to get per month in that zip code. So there was a few um, that were off there, like where there was only one agent or there was only two agents and there was a bunch of connections coming. So for some of you guys that haven't gotten a lot of connections, I made some adjustments and added a couple more zip codes to yours. So you should be getting some more connections. So keep it up. me because I've not been getting a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that was just done yesterday. Um, so it might take a couple of days for it to uh, for it to kick in. And I have a question. Does um, it have to say Zillow Flex Premier Agent to be Zillow Flex? Or because I'm getting random numbers from like 408-669 and another one that's telling me click one to accept this phone call. Or is that just the PRG, uh, uh, um, PRG sign? That's probably the PRG signs that you're getting calls from. The six six nine ones, I think those are the P I think those are the PRG signs. Um, yeah, that's probably what that is. Okay, just wanted to make sure that I'm because I've not been getting that many Zillow Flex calls. Yeah, and the reason why those of you guys that haven't gotten that many, um, what we've discovered is that the zip codes you picked, Zillow didn't have a lot of availability for those ones. So it's kind of luck of the draw. Um, like Anna picked, uh, I think Anna and Maori picked like the San Juan Batista or whatever area. <laughs> and, Benito <laughs> County. Uh, right. And um, no, but this is, and this is something that we're learning, right? Like as we- I'm, I'm going to coach Anna in a little bit. I'm going to coach Anna up in a little bit. So she picked those areas and Zillow had 20 connections a month allocated for those areas. Right. And then, and then her and Maori were the only ones on those on that zip code. So there was more shots on goal. And then I think like AJ had a zip code that had like, I don't know, 30 connections in that area. So there's, it was all kind of skewed. Right. So and they, also there's uh, no uh, commission break on that one. No Hollister. <laughs> <It's a> yeah. <laughs> So going forward on the next campaign, we're probably not going to pick Hollister or San Benito area um, just because the price points are lower. So we, we want to be strategic around which areas we pick, which price points, right? So that it makes sense uh, dollar wise, you know, because um, we only get so many leads to play with, right? So it's kind of like you got to be strategic around which, how much weight you're giving to different zip codes. So that when you do get a lead, it's a decent price point where there's a lot more meat on the bone after paying Zillow, their 35% and all that stuff, right? So will we also have to access into uh, no uh, uh, number as well, uh, Enrique, or no? To do what? I'm sorry? The zip code that had um, your lead number. I'm not understanding it. To do a zip code that has a, a what number? The zip code that uh, the Zillow say that, you know, has a number per month. Do we have access into those or no? Yeah. So they gave me a, a spreadsheet that says, okay, this zip code has five connections a month. This zip code has 20. This zip code has two. So they gave me a spreadsheet that breaks it all down for our campaign. So on the next campaign, they're going to give me that spreadsheet again. And it's going to tell me how many, how many connections estimated per zip code. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to try to divvy up the team. So it kind of creates an even flow where everyone's getting a, a, a good amount of opportunity. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you want uh, Willow Glen because it's a high price point, but Willow Glen only is giving out two connections a month. Right. So it's, it's also based off availability and what Zillow has available. Right. So they may say, hey, we only have two a month in Willow Glen, but in this other zip code, we have 10 connections a month. Right. So that's the thing. It's even if you choose a zip code, there may not be availability in that zip code. So that's that's the part where we got to like play around with on the back end. All right, guys, if there's no more questions, this is a wrap. Hopefully you guys got some nuggets out of this. Um, good job to everybody. Keep it pushing. Let me know if you guys need anything. I have a question. Um, yeah. if, if we get a sell to buy, um, do we get 
do we have to pay Zillow on both ends or just one end? What do you think? On the buy side. <laughs> I'm thinking both, but I'm hoping not. Okay. Makes Ain't sense. nothing for free, bro. <laughs> All right, for sure. All right, guys. Uh, for the gram, Zillow Flex Squad. What's up? All right. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Later.